Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk putting. How to choose the best putter for your golf game. We're going to base it on three principles of putting. So what can the putter help you or not in the relationship to these three principles? So the first one, green reading. Second one, face control, so start direction. Third one, pace control, so controlling the pace of that putt. If we take it as a given that green reading, none of these putters are particularly gonna help you read the greens, it's gonna be all focused on those other two. I just want you to be aware of those three things because obviously the first one is a huge one where the putter has no real say on it. So what they can actually do to help you or not, there's already a limitation. Now just quickly before the video starts, you've got a chance of winning a shot scope for Father's Day. This video is going out just before Father's Day. And for all the fathers and parents of fathers out there watching, if you wanna win a shot scope, what you need to do is subscribe to this channel down there, hit the thumbs up button on this video. If it gets to over 3,000 likes, we will give a shot scope away for free to someone who wants to improve their goal. The other thing you need to do, links in the description, is you need to go and follow ShotScope on Twitter. Why not? It's Father's Day. For all us fathers, a gift. Let's begin with start direction. So where you start the ball. What putter might give you a better chance of starting the ball on your desired line than another? Now for me, this is something I actually did a study on very recently with my daughter who's a beginner golfer, to myself, obviously someone more experienced, and I tested a new idea of putter, so something for me that I haven't tested before with big fangs, big lines out the back, comparing it to some extremes. So in this Wilson blade, something that's obviously got no lines, really small, compared then to the middle ground in your classic, this is a Scotty Cameron Newport Select, two so it's like a kind of ping answer classic shape we did the study over two weeks hit lots of putts we were locked up so what else could we do in a lockdown and what we found is that the different shapes and lineup lines and how much weight was off the face and how much the club sat on the floor naturally or twisted or not so this one you had to really aim up more the ping answer shape in the scotty cameron it was medium and then obviously in the bigger shape the cleveland putter here my one i'm gaming you could literally just put it down on a flat surface and it pointed in a general direction um my eldest found it really hard to aim this one up this was the hardest where for me it was a small difference between that one to the other end of the, of the extreme but there was still a difference enough to make me change even from a classic ping answer shape into something which is bigger. But for the higher handicapper in my daughter, it was such a noticeable difference from each step up going to the bigger ones with bigger lines, just really being so much easier for her to aim. Now, if we accept that none of these putters can do the green reading side, so out of the three things we're looking at today, none of them are gonna be able to tackle green reading, that's for you. If she is able to read the green successfully, she would have much better chance aiming, then in turn maybe starting the ball online, like most golfers, with some help. Now remember, I'm not saying that you must use X putter. My point more is that it's certainly something you should be testing to see if you can get that start direction on point in a much better consistent way with something with bigger lines on it, with bigger stretch back feelings to it. Because as you can see with the beauty of golf, start directions, not always that easy, no matter what you've got in your hands. And when it comes to bigger lines, bigger heads, bigger stretch back shapes, definitely every manufacturer I see at the minute has kind of got that club in their brand. So this is a ping, a new ping that I hit there. Absolutely felt ridiculously nice off the face. Maybe an individual video we'll do on that. White Hot Odyssey, they do same idea, big lines, and they do other big stretch back ones. Cobra at the minute with their 3D printed putters. This one got very extreme stretch back wings on it. And then even through to a Cleveland here, which again, big square shape, lots of lines coming out the back, flat front, it kind of sits and points. Oh yeah, this Cobra is amazing. The wing, size of those wings out the back does feel nice. That really makes me feel I can set that ball on an intended line, get it through the gate, get it on my start direction if my read is good. Cool, yeah. And all this one is doing, as you can see, it's just extreming 
that feeling, that visual help at the back here of what these lines are doing and how they can help me aim my putter. And these are all things you can be doing in a putter fitting. Like your putter fittings can certainly be as important as your driver fittings, which is something so many people are more geared up to going towards. But trying the different shapes with the different lines, maybe with some tests, can you start it in the right direction? And then added in ideas of feel and those kind of things. So the white hot here, this one's going kind of old school if you like in the old white hot look at that i remember this shape and face back in the day so it's pulling on my kind of heartstrings of what i remember so if this one feels good or worse say compared to maybe that cobra on my start direction as one of my tests then i'm gonna think right i want that shape if i want to stay with this brand again i think every brand offers very similar ideas in shapes so if you find you can get it in that right start direction and through, then I'm not sure I would have so much brand alliances, those kind of ideas. When it comes to start direction, I do think shape, bigger lines, bigger wings, more help of how it moves around as it swings back and through could really help some golfers. So what else might influence that start direction is how you move that putter back and forward, how you obviously deliver. So not only your aim at the beginning, but then in turn, how you deliver that putter head. Now, if we take it to the extreme, this putter when measured with myself and Fanula, the more newer golfer, definitely was harder to aim. The delivery was quite interesting though. It wasn't massively different each time. But if I pick up this putter, which I know is pushing it much more to the extremes. You know, it's a true, true kind of old fashioned blade, no lines. This one, as it swings around my body, might have different degrees of rotation, which then make me deliver that club in a different way. So where different putters join on the neck, where the weight is in the head. So if it joins more here, or if there's more weight out towards the toes and the back and here again, if I pick this ping up, you know, they're very differently distributed weights. So we get a medium toe hang on this one where on the Wilson it's just complete toe hang. That might, and it doesn't for everyone, influence the way I move that putter. And then if we take that to the extremes in the Axis 1 putter here, it actually balances more towards the target. It's not as people call face balance where it points up to the sky. It's actually balanced more towards the target. This might reduce the amount of rotation compared to one which has got toe hang. When you imagine if you put that down here, that means it's hanging naturally more to the right. Um, again, that's gonna need different torques and energies to make sure that face is rotating possibly the same way as that. These are all things that you should be testing. So start direction, key skill, shapes, absolutely can influence your start direction and there will be categories of certain golfers that fit into like stereotypes of less rotation on this one and a bit more on this one than the ping loads more or sorry the wilson blade loads more but there'll be plenty of people who are outliers as well which is why it's so important that you go and test and see how it blends to your patterns of how you want to move that putter in the comments down below have you been for a putter fitting have you tested your start direction, your ability to start that ball on an appropriate line to the reed? As you can see here, I've got variation. I'm through more than I'm not, but there's definitely variance. I've hit the gate a few times. The less I can hit that gate, the more I can get it through and get that start direction working. Then really we're on to pace control and obviously always green reading because where I start that ball, any kind of slope will be referenced to how hard I'm hitting it as well. I'm just going to get a cut more with this ping. Face on this putter just feels absolutely beautiful. Like proper stunning. Oh yeah, that feels good. So let's think about pace control. What might influence how you control the pace, if anything, when choosing a new putter? So we've got the pace set just at the bottom of the perfect putt here. So that putt's short, but it's a gimme, and the first one was pretty close. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna aim this perfect putter now a good like 15 degrees right. So I've got, let's pretend I've got no face control, but I use the same pace, not going in, but it's a gimme. I mean, it, it's dead, it's close. And then again, I'm gonna move it almost 20 degrees left now, same pace. So my pace control is quite good. You can see it's a totally wrong line, but it's a two putt. 
So all these are just pick them up, they're given. So we now got our line pretty much spot on, pretty close to maybe going every time. There we go, in it goes. But I'm now gonna get my pace control wrong. I'm gonna come up. So it's now taking a break. That is not a gimme. I'm gonna come right down to the bottom of the rung here. Pace completely wrong, obviously it's extreme. Great line, but it's not a gimme. So starting that ball perfectly through the gate, getting your start direction spot on, obviously is gonna help. But pace control is just a massive feature of you having less free putts and potentially holding a few more. Now going back to this ping, it's got a standout feeling off the face. And if we look at the other putters, we're seeing a metal face on the Mizuno, standout white face on the Odyssey, this black very soft face in the ping. My Cleveland's got a very heavy milled face, but a metal face. And each one of these putters has a very different feel to it. So for instance, the white hot here feels soft. It feels nice. It's what I want to feel. Now, is this gonna influence my pace control? I wouldn't be relating it to soft and hard. Good example there of pace look getting away from me. I've chosen my most crazy putt as well. It really slopes away down past the hole on this one. You've got to get the pace exactly right. So I wouldn't feel particularly that a softer one to a harder one has better pace control. But what it does do is it might simply feel the way I want a putter to feel, which then in turn makes me stand over a putt and feels like I can do what I want to do with it. So the feel off the face where I think it can be sold and often is thought about as a softer feel, more controlled kind of idea, firmer one might come off the face faster, those kind of ideas. It's playing so much more into what I feel in a putter. Now, if we go back to the ping, which is advertised as a high MOI putter, kind of playing into what ping are famous for. Now on a putt this length, I think it would be near on impossible to play out the MOI values, but when you start getting to 30, 40 foot putts, which obviously we have plenty of, um, and with free putting being such an issue, for handicap golfers, as you go up through the handicaps, you see more free putts per 18 holes, basically. Um, having a higher MOI putter might help you keep your pace control, miss hit variants, a little bit more under control because believe it or not, we miss hit putts. We do miss hit the putter. So again, I used to use, for instance, one of these in different brands. I've had a Wilson one, a Mizuno one, some classic blade ideas, and I loved it because my putting idols used it. Ben Crenshaw used it, watching him putt like a master with it, and it, it, I wanted to emulate those ideas. But I remember distinctly playing on many a Lynx courses as you grow up as an amateur in the UK. Lynx courses, you putt them off the green a lot. You're battling in wins, and you end up having 60 foot, 50 foot putts, and miss hitting this, compared to miss hitting something like the um, ping or other bigger headed, higher MOI um, clubs absolutely stood out. Like it actually, made, I stopped using it because it made me feel a little bit nervous when as soon as I had to start hitting it harder. And what you're gonna find is the higher handicap you go, the longer putts you're probably gonna have out on the course. And then in turn, I'd guess without seeing any studies, just on the people I've measured with amateurs, you see strike variance on the putter has massive values compared to better players who have much tighter strike patterns. So that extra help, that extra MOI might just be there to help you. And again, we're back to bigger heads, bigger lines, better alignment tools, but at the same time, the bigger that head, the more weight they can get off the face, the more they can increase the MOI of that putter, the more they increase the MOI of that putter. If that was to save you every 36 holes a free putt, every 18 holes a free putt would be amazing. I mean, they're huge stat gains. They are huge gains in your scoring that will give you a little bit of confidence. So can bigger shapes, higher MOI putters, weight off the face actually help you? Again, I would guess over a season of golf, you might find that you do have the odd less free putt. So I would argue it can do. Obviously, remember with putting, you can far outweigh any of these ideas. It's a light, slow moving object. If you're just good at putting, follow your rules of just being good at putting, I would say. So start direction. So how you control that face at delivery, your shapes, the way it sits, those kind of ideas might influence other things that are gonna influence 
your pace control, your face delivery, your aim, kind of every aspect of your putting almost combined. What about things like shaft length? So you've got, this is a, like the one Bryson uses, up the forearm ideas. So this putter goes up my forearm. It's set in a way that allows me to have the handle way forward. Is this allowing me to hold more putts? Is this allowing me to putt better? Well, again, it's something you would have to go and test. I haven't seen any studies or anything saying that they do, but certainly if you are having issues with a conventional putter, whatever that means, so conventional lengths, those kind of ideas, moving away and going to some different ideas, um, can really help people and I think with putting don't be afraid to experiment and work your feelings into the equation. Cool, maybe Bryson does have the answer. Can't be four in a row, can it? I think it can. Oh, everyone get the long one. So if moving away like I say, from conventions helps you, then definitely do it. That's something we're putting that you see. People are able to, you know, really move a feeling and chase the ideas of face control and pace control around. And then other things that might affect how you deliver that club. If you take the length of putter, maybe not to so far of an extreme. So this is a 35 inch putter. I think some companies go 34 standard, some 35. I've used 32 inches, 31. So down the shaft, so you wouldn't have this stuck out at the top. You you have shorter putters that allow you to swing that putter maybe on a different path because as I get shorter I might get over it a bit more and now I'm putting in a way that makes me feel I'm a bit straighter opposed to longer putters might make me feel like I want to make more of an arc stroke so the putter length might be influenced in some of your decisions in what you want as well but again every company is going to make every length they're generally custom fitable so you would, that's something you would work in, but certainly things that can influence how you deliver that putter. And again, when it comes to pace control, so you're missing all three here, where with the Bryson one there from Cobra, I hold all four. The, um, the longer one there, I don't feel that comfortable trying to hit it hard. Like I don't feel comfortable on longer putts. So again, that's the case of making sure that you are giving everything a fair test. And then ideas of grip. My Cleveland has a relatively chunky grip with quite a flat front on it, which I like, but I've also liked in the past these thinner, more kind of pistol grips, I think they're called, from Scotty Cameron. I had these on pings before and I've had them on my Scotties before. They are nice. Even just playing around with the grip thickness, the shapes, how flat it is on the front. So for instance, this Scotty one, nice flat front, but it's quite narrow, which I like, and I go in and out of liking, but I mean, it feels nice. But if I compare that to say the ping here, which is a medium, not as thick as my Cleveland, but much sharper. So kind of really sharp angles falling off that grip, which I actually quite like. I put this in my hand and instantly think, oh, that feels nice. If that influences how the club sits in my hand, how my hands then unite to that putter in turn, if it allows me to control how I deliver that face, these are all things I would be definitely working in. I think at the end of the day, when it comes to choosing the right putter, you have a lot of different options. I definitely see a little bit of a pattern, thank you, with aim. Um, I don't see such a huge pattern with face control for distance, so pace control. I definitely hear people talk about loving the feel of X, Y, or Z, a grip, a face. I mean, this ping has a standout feel on that face. Like it is gorgeous. You've got to go and test one. Right, if you see one of these in a shop, definitely go and hit one. It'll just let me know in the comments down below. It feels gorgeous off the face. And I think when it comes to pace control, dialing into as much MOI help as you can is only going to be a positive factor for you as you hit plenty of longer putts than you probably will ever practice unless you get them out on the course. You know, even my putting green here, I'm not able to practice a 40 foot putt. They've got that group both sides, haven't I there? Oh, I can't hold anything now. Ping feels great, but I can't hold anything with it. There we go. No, it's gone left. And believe it or not, other things that can be changed is the lie. So how the club comes out of the head, that will affect again, the kind of stroke that you put on it, how you affect the face control, strike, distance control, um, and obviously start direction. You've also got loft as well. There's loft on putters. People often forget this and different amounts of lofts. 
you know, when I was doing a lot of fitting, we used to do quite a few putter fittings, not as many as I would have liked, because people were always reluctant to do them. Um, but you would have some people who deliver X amount of loft, so you would take a degree or two off as static to make sure they get their loft in relationship to how far up they're hitting it to get the best rolls. It's no different to your driver. The launch conditions of your putter will severely affect how the ball rolls, reacts, the pace control, the start direction, all those kind of things. Um, and we don't all deliver the same lofts, believe it or not, in relationship to angle of attack, so much down or up at it, those kind of ideas. And you can get that fit into your um, putter to work for your game, for your putting. So for me at the moment, I definitely would push you more towards the bigger headed ones, ones that you can aim up and work back from there unless you've got a definite feeling of what you want to achieve with your putting. And then the other really kind of... Uh, the real bit of advice that I would give you, don't be afraid to do what I'm doing here. Think outside the little the box a little bit if you are struggling. It is a club that can really change um, and you might see some big benefits. There's no point just staying in that run in the mill if it's not helping you. This Bryson putter, I'm shocked that it's not illegal to put this on my forearm because it is illegal to anchor but apparently I can run this up my forearm. Cool. Pushed it. Quite like that. That's really making me think outside of the box as well. See comments down below. Hopefully this helps you make an idea of what you're trying to look for in your putting, what it actually can do and can't do, what the putters can do for you or not. Um, post a comment down below as well. Have you had a custom fit in your putting as well? I'd love to hear. And I'm just as bad. I mean, it was lockdown that made me do the test and I've completely changed the style of putter I use to this bigger putter from always being a more traditional shaped putter and even someone trying to get rid of lines to actually now using more lines. Test, test and test again, people. It does help you find some secret shots out there that you're leaving out there for free. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button as always. If you like the information, don't be afraid to subscribe. Plenty more free videos coming to help you make the best decisions for your golf. That Bryson one did well, didn't it?